Hey guys. <clears throat> so over the course of a month or so now, I've really been kind of figure out why I cop watch and try to, and I've been trying to figure out a way to explain it to people. Here's why I cop watch. And I do question myself internally. What gives me the right to go out and do this? What gives me the, you know, I've been looking for the why and I just couldn't fill in the why. I know the how I do it. I know the what I do, but I just couldn't get the why. W-H-Y. And so I'm at work and I'm, you know, multitasking. And I'm watching <coughs> a video called The Making of the Equalizer Behind the Scenes. Uh, what was it? 10 Mile cinema or something 10 mile scene cinema on youtube it's on youtube it's called the making of the equalizer behind the scenes it's 51 minutes long and it's really interesting so i'm watching this this featurette making of this movie with denzel washington directed by antoine fuqua martin Sokus kasokas plays uh teddy the bad guy uh it's got david harbour um Chloe Moretz and several other people. At any rate, so I'm watching this and something came out at the beginning of this video, this feature at there's a horse. Oh look, a horsey. Somebody's got a horsey up there. They're riding horses. I'm sorry. Uh a squirrel. So I'm watching this and the why was filled in. I caught the why. Do you know why? And, and by the way, just as a disclaimer or a preface, no, I am not pretending to be Robert McCall from the exter uh, the uh, Equalizer. I'm not pretending to be Denzel Washington. I'm not pretending this is a movie and I'm some action star. It's deeper than that. And I'm going to get into that. Hopefully I do remember to get into all that. But why does Robert McCall, we're talking about Denzel's character in the movie, The Equalizer. Why does Robert McCall do what he does? You know, he promised his late wife, I'll, I'm not going to go back to being that guy. Um, but because of Chloe Moretz's character, you know, when she gets beat by the pimps, he goes back to being that guy. And then the cops... Uh, go to his friend's mother's restaurant and do what they do. And then he like goes out to them. Uh, he goes back to being that guy. And he tells Teddy, there's a thing that he tells Teddy in the film. I promised my wife or I promised some people, whatever he said, that I would never do this again. I would never, you know, go back to violence or whatever he says. He goes, but for you, I'm going to make an exception or I'm willing to make an exception. Uh, so he basically tells Teddy, look, man, I don't really want to be that guy, but because of you, I'm going to make an exception and be that guy. Uh, because of the guys that laugh at him when he offers them the $9,800 to f let the girl go and they go, <laughs> no, you know, and <clears throat> he's got to be that guy to protect these young girls that are being victimized through prostitution and trans, uh, trafficking. I know that cop watching isn't that deep. I mean, I know that, you know, that um, we're not talking about prostitution and trafficking and all that, but we are talking about possible or potential corrupt law enforcement officers, law enforcement officers that bend the rules and break the policies of their departments to violate people's First and Fourth Amendment civil rights. Police officers that go on fishing expeditions in violation of people's civil rights and say, well, the ends justifies the means. No, the ends does not justify violating people's civil rights. That's what we're talking about. Corrupt cops. Not every cop is corrupt. I would say the majority, more than half, of the law enforcement officers that I record in video happen to just be doing their job. They're pretty good cops. 
But that means that the less than half that are out there doing the wrong thing, I don't know who they are. And the only way to find them is to record them. That's why I do it. So let's go to the equalizer of Denzel Washington. So there's something they said at the beginning of the video when they said, um, why, does Robert, why did Robert McCall become that guy? It was because... He had the tools necessary to, or the tools available, we'll say it that way, to help out people that can't help themselves. The young girl that gets beat by her pimps. He has the means, you know, Liam Neeson said it best in Taken, I have a special set of skills. You know, like, you don't want to meet me, I'm that guy. And Robert McCall, Denzel's character, has that special set of skills, a particular set of skills. That's what he says. I have a particular set of skills. Well, Robert McCall has those. And if he doesn't step in to help that young girl that got beat by the pimps or help his friend's mother who's getting robbed by supposed to be good cops. Remember what he says of the cop laying on the ground? Protect and serve, huh? You know, and he's like telling him, you guys are, no, you guys are wrong. Um, he has the means available to change their world and to help these people that may not have those means available or those tools available or those particular set of skills to help themselves. He has all of that and his conscience won't let him rest knowing that if he turns his head or he turns his back, he may be no better than the pimps and corrupt cops and all of them out there doing wrong. He knows that I have a chance to step in and do the right thing. I have this particular set of skills. I have the tools available. I either step in or I'm that other guy. So he becomes that guy to step in and have a clear conscience. And I'm listening to all this and listening to Antoine Fuqua and Denzel Washington uh, talk about all this and Todd Black and Richard Wink. Those are the guys that are involved in this film. I'm listening to them all talk about all of this. And I thought, that's the why. That's the why. W-H-Y. Why I cop watch. Because I have a particular set of skills. Um, and I know some of you are going to bring it on. I don't care. Bring on that heckling and the trolling. And I think it's funny. But I have that particular set of skills. I know how to edit a video. I know how to record. I know how to put it together. I'm not talking about creating a narrative. I'm talking about I know how to do videos. I know how to create content. I know how to get it uploaded to the internet. I know how to file complaints against law enforcement officers if I have to. I have the tools available to me. And I have this particular set of skills. And if I don't use it for good, if I don't get out there and record the police and try to locate those corrupt police officers, like the ones that had the guy handcuffed, right stopped in the middle of the street. His car was in the left turn lane. And when I come up with a camera, the one cop goes, whoosh, whoosh, and the other cop looks up over. He was searching the car and he goes, camera. And he goes, oh, we're done. We're done. Unhandcuff him. And they unhandcuff the guy. They put all his stuff in his car. They get in their police car and they drive off. Now, why did they do that right away? Very fishy, very suspicious. Now, if they would have just said, hey, how you doing, buddy? And then finished up and everything. Okay. But when he goes, whoosh, whoosh, camera. And oh, yeah, we're done. Let's go. Come on. I'm not stupid, but people out here aren't stupid. We know what's going on. And if I don't step in and do something about that and record these cops and expose them to their communities, I'm no better than them. I'm turning my head. Just as we say these good cops, well, if there's Good cops, there wouldn't be any bad cops. Because we say the good cops turn their head, right? Well, if I just turn my head and go, let them do it. There's nothing we can do about it. I'm no better than them. And it bugs my conscience. 
It bugs me. I lose sleep at night. I know I might be exaggerating, but I'm not exaggerating. I lose sleep at night sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes I do lose sleep at night. I wake up in the middle of the night thinking, my God, somebody just got killed by the cops. I'll give you an example. When Andre White out of uh, Columbus, Ohio, remember when he came out with his cell phone like, hello, and the cop shot him? Because he had something in his hand. It was a cell phone. I actually stayed up for a whole night and a half. I just couldn't sleep. I did the editorial on that. And that was one of the reasons I lost sleep over it. Doing that editorial, all I could think was, my God, man, this dude had a cell phone in his hand and the cop shot him. And he was, he belonged there. He was waiting on his friends to come home and let him in the house. He was a guest. There's a black man in the garage of my neighbor's house. Yeah, it was the house guest waiting on them to come home in the wintertime. Ended up dead. And I lost sleep over that. And I thought, if I don't go out and cop watch, then I'm no better than the cops who turn their head and go, whatever. And it bugs me. So I found the why I do what I do. I found the why. It's because of what Robert McCall does. And they talk about that in this. If you want to go watch that video again, it's called the making of the equalizer behind the scenes. And they talk about how, you know, especially today and today's um, uh, today's climate of the United States. Wouldn't isn't it great? Wouldn't it be great to have a guy like that out there, a superhero that doesn't wear a cape? A superhero that doesn't have special powers or fly. He just has a particular set of skills. And he's able to help people that may not be able to help themselves. Wouldn't it be great to have a guy like that? That's what they talk about in this video. And I thought, I'm not a hero. I'm just a guy who records the police. But in essence, I could be that guy. I could be the guy that... Get somebody, keep somebody from going to jail because the cops go, oh, there's a camera here, man. Just give them a citation, let them go. You know what I mean? Versus no camera. They arrest him, they take him to jail. What, what, what are we going to put in our report? Um, he was resisting. That sounds good. But with my camera there, all right, whatever, fine. Okay, he wasn't resisting. Yeah, let him go. You see what I'm saying? The difference there. If there's no camera, it's whatever the cop said. If there's a camera there, the cops have to tell the truth because if they don't, some attorney is going to watch the video and go, that, that's not what they said in the police report. They said something totally different. So I could be that guy. I have that particular set of skills. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you listened all the way through because this is a very important message right here. If you are a cop watcher and you're going, what is the why? Why do I do this? I just told you why. You can be that guy or you could be that other guy and just turn your head and go, I don't care. It ain't me. Me? I can't do that. And especially after becoming a Christian. Now I became, I, I uh, by the way, I'm going to end this with this little note here. I got, I'm going to go 15 minutes probably. But I joined the church. I became a member of the church January 1st, 2021. So don't judge me as a Christian based on prior to January 1st, 2021. I wasn't in the church at that time. I was different. I, ever since I joined the church in 2021, I don't know, I feel different. I feel like I'm changing, like I've changed. But in reference to people out here in the community, I, I love people. I hate seeing bullies. I hate seeing corrupt government. I hate seeing law enforcement officers that lie and are dirty and hide corruption, deleting videos that are really evidence. I hate seeing that. And I have the particular set of skills and the tools available to curb that. If I don't act on that, 
Am I any better than them? Really? 